Welcome back to the table. I'm so glad that each of you are here. Today's episode is our last episode of the She Is series on identity. If you haven't downloaded the PDF on our website yet, today is the day. It can be read all at once or across 30 days as a devotional. It contains 30 descriptions of who you are according to God's Word. Reading God's Word may be new to you, and that's why we've spent hours putting this resource together so you can easily read through the identity God outlined for you in Scripture. Today, I am so grateful for the content creators who inspired this community. So I am going to unashamedly fangirl plug and thank some of the folks that I love. I don't know them. Again, this is an unashamed fangirl plug. But seriously, follow all these people, look up their websites, listen to their podcasts, and buy all of their books. But hold on to your bootstraps because you could end up anywhere doing anything if they have the impact on you that they've had on me. Any up downs? Thank you for your podcast and for all the books you've shared with us. In 2019, I read Remember God as I wrote She Is, and all the truth that poured into my heart literally set the foundation for what would come in 2019 and led to this community. Jenny Allen, thank you for showing me I was made for this. I love, love, love all your books and the F Gathering, but your most recent devotional, Made for This, inspired some true changes in my life that led to this community. Finally, before I bore my listeners, I want to thank Brian Dixon. I listened to him as he was interviewed by Annie F., my girl, on his book, Start With Your People. And that book became the action plan for creating this community. As we grow as a community, I want to share resources and awesome people with you because my hope is that as you pursue truth, you'll also pursue some big dreams. And as a member of this community, we want to support you. So, some of you guys may know I'm a sixth grade social studies teacher. And if you didn't know, well, now you do. Middle schoolers are hilarious, and I love teaching them. Anywho, we recently finished this unit on ancient China, and we were learning all about Taoism and the belief in yin and yang. And I showed this video And unfortunately, I didn't catch that there was a drawing, an anatomically correct drawing of a woman in the video when I watched it like half-heartedly while we were prepping. So I'm not exactly sure (laughs) what these sixth graders will remember about yin and yang, but I'm certain it won't be the connection to Taoism. Anyway. Yin and yang is a balance. It's two forces that come together to create a harmonious equilibrium. So what does yin and yang have to do with your identity? Well, let me tell you. Your identity is made up of two forces that act in tandem, just like yin and yang. Those forces are your strengths and weaknesses. Both can come together to create a harmonious equilibrium if you're willing to do the work of understanding the truth about both. So, how can you figure out your strengths and weaknesses? I have a couple of fun suggestions. The first one is the Enneagram. Love it or hate it, I love it. But in order to really use it, you have to take the time to understand it. The Enneagram consists of nine lenses for viewing the world. Your lens impacts the way you see the world, allowing you to access strengths and understand weaknesses that affect the way you perceive the world around you. Beth McCord, also known as your Enneagram coach, is a fantastic expert you can trust. Visit her Instagram or website at Your Enneagram Coach to do the work of learning about the Enneagram through her amazing Insta stories, online courses, or books, which Dylan and I loved gifting people for Christmas this year. You can also take a test there to help you discover your type. That is by far the best test we've found on the internet. Dylan and I attended her conference a few months ago. It focused on the Enneagram and marriage. 
Disclaimer, if you are married, understanding the strengths and weaknesses of your spouse within your marriage, as well as how your strength and w- strengths and weaknesses affect your marriage, is crucial, right? So I highly recommend if you're married or unmarried that you learn about the Enneagram. But if you are married, I highly recommend her book, Becoming Us, to help you learn about your spouse and yourself and how you both interact within your marriage. The next one is Myers-Briggs. I'm including this one for those of you who cannot jump on the Enneagram train. Myers-Briggs is still out there and it is extremely helpful. The Myers-Briggs is a personality test that focuses on specific personality traits. Based on the combination of traits you possess, the Myers-Briggs gives you an insight on strengths and weaknesses. They also tell you who you are most like in history and pop culture, which is really, really interesting. All right, the next one is a little bit more in depth, but it is an incredible resource. It is called Strength Finders 2.0 by Gallup. It is a book that comes along with a test. This one will be an investment of time and a little bit of money. It's not very expensive at all. But you will really need to read the book as well as complete the test to understand the context and application of your test results. I was introduced to this test and book by the great JP and Christy Vick. They were our pastors at the time, and we were serving as a part of a ministry team with some vastly different views and personalities. They use this tool to unite us and help us understand our strengths and weaknesses in relation to what we brought to the table as a team. This tool changed the way I viewed my role on the team and the people I served with. I began to see my strengths as valuable and identify the ways I could serve my team. If you're asking yourself here at the start of the new year how you could serve or help other people, or maybe what you should do in ministry or even in your workforce if you're finding yourself kind of at a dead end, this is an incredible place to start. All right, the last one's kind of lame, but I do find it extremely effective. If you're wondering what your strengths and weaknesses are, you can ask. Ask other people. Now, I know for some of you that sounds mortifying. And it makes me a little queasy too. But the people around you that you work with, your family members, your best friends, they've seen you at your best and they've seen you at your worst. And most likely they have some information on your strengths and weaknesses. Some of them may be really excited to share that with you. And some of them may be best for them not to share that at all. But anyway, one of the things you can do to find out is just to ask. There is something you can find as a tool to use on the internet. There are a lot of them. It's called a 360 assessment. A lot of times they will... Uh, give you a link that is full of questions that you can text and email to all of your people in your life, and they can anonymously anonymously fill out a survey about you and give you feedback on certain areas of your strengths and weaknesses that you are looking to explore more about. Or you can simply just send a text to your m- group of friends probably don't do it as a group text because that could get weird, but you can send it to some people who are really close to you and just say, hey, I'm trying to learn about myself, my identity, who God's called me to be. Can you give me some feedback on my strengths and my weaknesses? So back to the Taoist, they teach that when yin and yang are out of balance, tension takes over. Whew, I hate tension. But honestly, I feel it. And I feel it all the time. I feel it in my work, school. I feel it in relationships, in serving, and especially at the end of the day when I feel like I failed at being good at all of the above. We hate our weaknesses. We all want to be good at everything. But the truth is, We are not. 
And when we are not, and we begin to look inside of ourselves and hate the ways that we fall short and hate the weaknesses that we desire to be strengths, that's when tension is created. And in reality, that's not the tension that God has for us. We are covered by his love. God is good. So we don't have to be good at everything. We can be us. When we understand our strengths and our weaknesses, we can bring both to the table and know that we are loved. God created both of them so he could use both of them, your strengths and your weaknesses, so he could love you in both and grow you in both. We learn to achieve balance when we allow God to cover both our strengths and our weaknesses in love. I hope you walk away from this series knowing yourself a little better than you did a few weeks ago. But now we have to do something with what we've learned. We have to walk out this identity God has spoken over us. If you forget and find yourself sinking, Just lift your head and remember. Song of Solomon 2.4 says, His banner over you is love. The proof of His love is Jesus. He sent His Son to die for you. He is full of love for you. When He looks at you, He sees you, the one He loves. And as difficult as it may be, it's time to receive it. Receive your true identity. You are loved. Now, you've heard this question three times. And my hope is that your heart has begun to search and identify the truth around you. So, before we go, I have an important question for you. What is true in your life today?